know it's not a lady's place to write to a gentleman like this. I know it's not a lady's place to write to a gentleman at all. She must wait and fret and panic, bite her nails and take a tonic, sit and groan and weep and sigh and chip the heavy hours away. Well, I've waited and I've fretted, panicked, groaned and wept and sighed and every night lain wide awake for two months Ever since your visit, I've been hammering my head against an iron prison bed. Why did you come? If you'd stayed away, my life would have gone on, dull and bleak. But bearable because I wouldn't need to hope. I wouldn't know what I was missing. I'd continue fantasising, bathing in romantic streams of novels, magazines and dreams while my family packaged me into an early womanhood, led to markets dumb and good. I'd be exhibited and my teeth, hair, skin, eyes, height, weight, shape, size, intelligence, and disposition, special peculiarities, pedigree, and breeding stock would all be fully scrutinised. And maybe I'd secure a mate of suitably high-born estate of middle or advancing years who'd lead me down the aisle in tears, invade my body with a grunt and put himself out to grass when he had sired sufficient family. And I'd continue, quite content, with daily chores and social calls, good works and mother craft and balls. That's not the life for me. That's why I'm writing to you. Can't you see that you and I were meant to be? A long time ago, before you ever actually came to see us, I dreamed about you. I knew your face, your voice, your manner. How you entered a room how you smiled, and how you stood, and how you sat and yawned at superficial chat and fidgeted like a, like an angry child. Everything was in the dream. I even knew your name. And every dream was one step closer. First we were tongue-tied and gauche. Then we found a sense of humour. And by accident, we touched. And kissed. And found we were tongue-tied again. But since you came to see us, 
since you entered the room and smiled and sat and yawned and went. Those dreams have gone. And I lie in bed terrified it's all a plot to send me mad. I'm not going to read the set through. I'll seal it, send it, let it come flapping through your letterbox for you to stack on the pile of all the other dumb and reckless rubbish you receive each week from girls who are too sick with love to speak. You can do as you like, it's up to you. I've laid my bleeding heart bare on a plate. You can ignore it, or tear it in two, or pity, or mock its poor, pathetic state. Alternatively, you might mount your fiery charger white and gallop through the howling night and hear my choked and feeble call and scale the granite castle wall and break the iron chain and ball and then, oh ecstasy of bliss, embrace and wake me with a kiss.